My name is Doug Clark. I'm a professor and Centennial Research Chair in the School of Environment and Sustainability at the University of Saskatchewan. My research looks at mostly decision making in northern wildlife management context. So a lot of the work I do is with communities on particular issues uh, or in response to particular issues that, uh, that come up. One issue I'm doing a lot of work on these days is polar bear human conflicts and one project as part of that, uh, that research emphasis involves monitoring polar bear visits to field camps in Wapask National Park in northern Manitoba. Wapask is a pretty remote northern national park. Uh, it's, its nearest boundary, uh, well the nearest community near it is 45 kilometers away and that's Churchill, Manitoba. So it, uh, it, it, it incorporates uh, a pretty large chunk of coastline between uh, Cape Churchill and the Nelson River. Uh, it's 11,000 odd square kilometers, so a little bit bigger than Jasper. Uh, at l the last numbers I saw suggested about 50 visitors a year, aside from folks just doing aerial flight seeing or coming in by tundra buggy, um, which would mean that polar bears outnumber visitors in this park about 20 to 1. So obviously knowing what polar bears are doing relative to, to people and to visitors uh, is a pretty important consideration for this national park. It's uh, right on the coast of Hudson Bay, uh, it, so the bears come off the, the ice in the bay in the springtime uh, and then they spend much of the summer ashore either on the coast or inland in the denning area where the females for much of that whole population that uses the western half of Hudson Bay, uh, that's where they go to den and give birth. They're in their dens in the middle of the park uh, and beyond uh, for the whole winter. They come out again in March and then head out to the sea ice and start hunting seals again. So uh, the park is polar bear country year round. The project was started by uh, the, the, the park's chief warden, Sheldon Kowalchuk. Uh, they built several new field camps in 2008-2009 and by th 2010 it was becoming clear they were getting more polar bears visiting them than they were expecting. They would tried to put them in areas where they had fewer polar bears but wasn't quite working out that way. So Sheldon invited uh, me and my colleague Ryan Brook to get involved with them uh, in a research project to try to figure out what was going on. Were the camps attracting bears? What was happening? And so that's, uh, that's what we've been doing ever since. The project's now in its fourth year and the data has proven to be just fascinating. So the primary tool in data collection for this project are these, uh, these trail cameras. Um, trail cameras, camera traps, remote cameras, there are a number of terms for them, but what, the, what they all are essentially and what this is, is uh, a motion triggered camera and every time an animal walks by uh, this camera takes three pictures and each photo is date and time stamped and other, other uh, information like the temperature, phase of the moon is all collected along with that so we have all of that data tagged to the photographic record of what walked by. And in our case, we do see a lot of polar bears uh, walk by the research camps. We also see every other animal that walks by too, as well as the people who use the camps. One uh, really interesting sequence that we, we took last summer with these cameras showed that there was one polar bear mother and cub repeatedly visiting one camp as soon as people left. So we'd have a photograph of people leaving and then two hours later she'd be showing up looking at the camp, walking around and just, you know, scoping it all out. And the folks in the camp at that time certainly knew she was around, but until we had these images no one knew how regularly she was visiting when the camp was unoccupied. In, in research terms, we don't really know the full potential of this technique yet. What can you do with it? And that's the question that we're trying to ask right now. We've, we've had these cameras up and running in Wapask since 2011. We know they're reliable. We know they take good data. So now we're starting to, to really hone in on, on trying to refine our questions. What can we do with this data? What kinds of questions can we ask? What kinds of questions can we answer? What do we need to consider in framing those questions, setting up a sampling design? Uh, you know, one of the, the first questions from our perspective now that we have a, a good number of, of bear visits recorded on these cameras, how many cameras per camp do we need to really record reliably bear visits so that we can, we can see any trends that may or may not be going on and, and determine what other 
variables may be related to when and how often polar bears visit camps is what we're trying to do.